Did you get all that? I'm Tom. January 16th, I'll be in Mexico City. That's how I started my blog this year. It continues. After that, I'm moving to Coyhaique, Chile, where I'll live from February to June. It's May now. That's me doing a story for the MISC Intercultural Digital Storytelling Program. I was a fellow this year. I'm also doing a direct study, where I'm supposed to have multiple digital stories completed. Getting these stories has been harder than I thought it would be. It's not that I can't find a story. There are too many stories. It's been over four months. I've lived in two countries. I've walked dozens of kilometers in Mexico City. I've traveled hundreds of kilometers in Patagonia. But getting to the end of a story is like reaching the end of the rainbow. I can see it. I can get closer. But when I think I'm there, it's gone. There's the story of El Chopo, the old rock counterculture market. They used to sell records and now they sell fashion. There's the story of my organizational sustainability project in Mexico City. This is how it's been going. The story of the Mexico City Metro, not very exciting. Or when half of Mexico City had its water shut off for five days. I barely noticed anything. Then I moved into a tent in Patagonia. And there's the story of the Carretera Austral, which connects Chile from north to south, and the hitchhikers on it. That's how I get to town and back. The story of the gauchos and how they're related to the Basques in the western United States. How Patagonia destroyed my shoes, as well as some other items. How it's a small world and you can run into interesting people. Or the story of hydroelectric dams in Chile. Those who want them, and those who want them gone. How do I decide which story to tell, or whose? I get help from outside. Danny and Bob help me figure some things out. And we decide, just choose one. But each story can come in different flavors, and there's stories about telling stories. But how do you tell a story when you're out making stories? I could tell a story every week. Remember, I have that blog. But then I'm spending my time making stories, instead of living them. And I am working 8 to 5 during the week. Don't forget I was living in a tent for 6 weeks. So I get these ideas, like creating a Bernstein Bears cover for too many stories. And those ideas float off into space, untold. As I'm making this, it occurs to me that I can still tell these stories past my directed study deadline. I'll keep telling them even if I don't put them into a nice little video. A grade is nice, but living the stories, reflecting, sharing are the important parts. So, January 2016, I was in Mexico City. And these things happened. But that's not a story, is it? So I'll just list some things that I'm thinking about. 1. Just choose a story. 2. Or 1A. Set limits. A time frame, a location, a person, an event, a feeling, a sound. Build your story around that. And finally, don't wait for it to be perfect. Work with what you have. Like these dogs. These are sleeping dogs in Santiago. I woke one of them up. I could tell a story of where I found them. I could talk about dogs in the city. I could talk about wondering whether this dog is dead or not. But the story that sticks with me is about trying to take a photo that showed everyone walking around the dog, not paying attention to it at all, going about their business. I was thinking about that story when this woman walked through and left me with a different story. My automatic defense in my head as she walked by, as I stood there with my camera and its telephoto lens. No, I'm not trying to take a photo of you. Well, not you specifically. I was here first. That's my story. But great. Now I want to know her story. And where is everybody else going? And the dog's not dead. I saw it move. <laughs>